and welcome to this tutorial of my abstract floral that I painted. Uh, this was done with inks and watercolours. It's um, beautiful, it's got some beautiful textures to it and we finished it off with some liquid gold foil as well. Um, lots of interest and I'll show you how I keep things loose and interesting and uh, bring together a cohesive artwork. So this was the base coat. Um, really it was just lots of water and flicking some ink around to begin with. So now I'm putting on where I'm feeling that is the right place for the floral features. Just laying down some more water. Um, using the Art Spectrum ink in magenta, which is a beautiful colour. So I'm just finding the floral form, just very loosely, and I love to use the eyedropper top to the inks. Mixed with lots of water, it just does its own thing. Um, bringing in a bit of crimson there to bring a, a little bit more uh, depth of colour to the base of the floral form. It's uh, really quite pretty. And highlighting it with a bit of pink, pale pink in that Amsterdam. Obviously, I'm just playing here. It's just very early stages. Um, playing with ink and the water and just getting some form onto the paper. Um, loving how the ink mixes and melds with the water and flows by itself. It's um, a lovely way to paint. So now I'm coming in with my um, biggest size in my mop brush. You can see there's quite a lot of water uh, still on the paper and there's also a lot of water in my brush. So I'm just sort of teasing it, pulling it around where I feel like the floral form should be shaped. When you see me go off to the right there, I'm just cleaning out my brush and putting um, more clean water in to it. I'm just pulling some small lines um, to make a, a um, an abstract you need contrast so I'm just pulling through some small lines <coughs> still with a lot of water in that as well I'm not overly sure if the um, the darker red I mean, the, the crimson that I put in was right um, and I'm still you know, it's a bit of a push and a pull with that. Um, there's a lot of water on the paper. Um, as you can see, it's just, and it mixes nicely, but I'm still not happy that um, what's, well, it's certainly not even done. So um, it's, it's all about the push and pull of creating the artwork. And sometimes it's best to leave it and just let it meld in the water and see what happens. So I'm finding a second form down here um, using the hake brush there with lots of water in it. Um, it's hard to see on the camera, but it's very wet. The, uh, the paper I use is uh, 300 GSM and um, holds the water beautifully. So back in there with the magenta. I don't think I use the crimson in this one. And this one feels like it's more of an open flower. Um, then the top one seems more like a bud. I'm still working a bit with composition and um, pulling things together and pushing them out. It's just ever so slightly um, with using the mop brush like uh, on its side rather than on the tip. There's a lot of water in that brush. You can see even there's a lot of water on the paper and moving the paper around is giving some more interesting marks and flow there as well. There's lots of interesting. That's what I found with the first layer. There is um, a lot of blue in the Payne's Grey which was in the first layer which was really interesting. Um, Payne's Grey is a mixture of um, uh, black and ultramarine blue is what makes the actual colour up and uh, it's beautiful and you can see it when it actually dries there's a lot more blue to it than you can imagine. 
So here it's still just the push and pull of um, getting the balance right. Um, and that was just some tissue paper mopping up the water to um, stop it from pooling and um, not heading in the right direction where I didn't want it. So now I'm just picking up some of the uh, leaf forms, which I'm doing in Payne's Grey again. That's the Art Spectrum Payne's Grey. So I'm feeling where uh, the bottom of the leaf would be the darkest area and probably and pulling it up from there so into the light. Just trying to work a little bit. But as you can see, there's a lot of water on the paper. Um, makes a beautiful contrast where it hits the water and where it doesn't. So you get some beautiful lines where it doesn't hit the water and some stuff muted areas where it does hit the water. I think I just pulled in um, a bit of a stem feel as well for the bottom one where I think the stem might go. Should we do a bit more work on that later? So this is dried now and I'm coming in with uh, watercolours, so the Daniel Smith that I'm using here. And I think it was Crinacridone Rose was the colour I'm using here. Now I like to use my watercolours straight out of the tube. It keeps me loose. It um, gives beautiful contrast in my line work. And then I'll tease it out with the water. And it is just teasing it out ever so slightly. Um, then obviously there'd be a lot more colour in the bottom and lightness through to the top in the floral form. So it's just a matter of um, coming in now with some uh, clean, clear water and um, teasing out just enough of um, the watercolour to um, work on highlights and um, bring some interest into the petal forms. So I've actually gone down to a smaller size in the mop brush and sometimes it is just kind of rolling it ever so gently close to the watercolour and it just, it's just enough to pick it up and then it's about um, picking up the hard and soft edges, rolling it through, just picking it up where I want to and making some marks. It's also um, some beautiful marks are made when the brush, brush isn't as wet and just pulled it through. Hard and soft edges and fading out. There we go, just fading that one out. It was a bit too hard. Play with the um, movement in the paper as well to give you some beautiful um, puddles and pools which works beautifully. when the water just touches the watercolour but then it also has some texture once it dries as well which brings it beautifully together a fine rigger brush here um, just picking up just a bit of colour the darker areas it'll just pick up the colour beautifully and pull it out bringing some interesting marks time to let that one dry a little bit and then we might work on it some more just finding the open petals on this one again back with the quinacridone rose fading that one back 
out into the background, that back petal of the open floral. And then they'll be darker here at the front, more so than the back featured row. Um, It's nice to find just some soft areas as well with nothing hard and it just brings a bit of colour and form um, to the imagination. So pick up some water when, with your brushes, just um, using a dry brush and picking up some of the water as well and cleaning up uh, little mistakes that you don't um, feel belong. Just finding that back petal there in the background. It's ever so light, but it just needs to be there. Otherwise it's uh, defi not defined enough. feature there. I think that's probably about it on that one. This is Payne's Grey in the Daniel Smith watercolours just to bring through more of the um, the stems just to bring a bit of solid colour more into it for the stem area and, and it does mix beautifully with that quinacridone rose to make a beautiful colour it's a dark purpley sort of colour it comes together it's just lovely you can see me just touching that into the bottom of that picture, floral form there and again, hard and soft edges, just to give the contrast. Just pulling it back with some tissue paper. If it's, um, if it's not working, pick it up quickly and, um, and it's all fixed, easily fixed. You go there's that beautiful purple in the bottom of that uh, flower there it's just lovely it's maybe something of that time I will work with again in the future let's remember that quinacridone rose and Payne's grey mix that together beautiful color it's bringing the harder edges into the leaf forms now with the Payne's Grey from Daniel Smith. You might think it looks um, excessive to use the um, beautiful watercolour straight on the paper, but it's just watercolour. It's just paint. It's there to be used and it really does give a beautiful end feature to it. thicker the bits of um, watercolour actually end up with nice and a beautiful sheen on it um, and it's a lovely feature I, I just I love using the watercolour straight out of the um, tube it's just lovely there we are again hard and soft edges um, some line work to bring a bit of interest. It's just some beautiful little spots in that where the blue has melded into the um, the pink and it's just lovely. Just 
picking up some of the edges of the forms that I wanted to feature. That's it. It's giving something that looks a bit like um, a petal at the bottom of that floral piece there. Something that's like a, a sepal or a petal off the bottom of the flower. Just a bit of balancing out. I think you just saw me actually put my paintbrush straight into the tube and pick up a bit of paint that way. Don't be afraid and don't be afraid of the watercolour, it's just beautiful. So really that does need to dry. There is still quite a lot of water as you can see in the centre of that top one. There's quite a lot of water still sitting there. They do take a while to dry in between um, layers. Dabbing it like that with the tissue is also very nice to um, pick up some highlights before it does dry. And sometimes it's best just to walk away and let it dry. See what you're left with after that. So once it is dry, I'm coming in with this liquid gold leaf. Uh, which I love, it's beautiful. Um, an easy way to bring through a bit of gold and the sparkle without actually having to go through the process of gold leafing anything. You can see this one, it really does need to be mixed um, well. Uh, and I've also found that um, the paintbrush you really can't use again. It's I can't get it clean. It's not worth cleaning. So I just use something old or a skewer or something that um, you're happy to throw away um, with that gold leafing. It is beautiful though. So I'm finding the stamens will be in gold for these floral forms. So these ones are coming up from the centre. I'll list underneath all the um, the inks and the Daniel Smith colours that I used so you can um, know exactly what I've used and that gold leaf as well it's it's beautiful so they'll all be listed below just making some little dots at the top of the stamen things that uh, trying not to overdo it at this stage and coming right out of the center of this one Tiny little dots for the top of the stamens and really it's not far off being finished. Just a few little bits and pieces to finish that off. I love the, um, the end work. The end result was really quite pretty and the um, gold does sparkle. It's beautiful when you walk past an artwork and it just sparkles just a little bit. it for the gold. I think I do pick it up and show you. It does sparkle and it's really quite pretty and it's even better once it's dried. So I hope you have enjoyed this. If you'd like any more information just um, leave a message below. Anything you missed and you want to ask me about, there's that sparkle. It's very pretty. And that is the end result. So 
watercolour. Lots of water. Hope you've enjoyed.